A lot of people find maths hard in school. And that doesn't surprise me. Because if you look at a typical math school book, what you find is that there is stuff to learn, but preciously little in the way of explanation. And if you have to memorize mathematical formulas, but you never explained why those formulas are the way they are, then it's going to be hard to remember them. So what I want to do in this series, because this is going to be the first of a series of videos, is explain a few of those formulas that you need to learn when you're learning maths. This first one is about trigonometry. And it is the surface of a triangle. As you learn in school, when you're learning math, the surface of a tri triangle is half the width of its base times its height, or the width of its base times half the height. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. But why is that the case? Well, let me show you why that is the case. Because it's very simple once you visualize triangles. Why? that is the surface of any triangle. But in order to start explaining this, I'll start explaining it with the simplest form of a triangle, because you can then expand on that and see how it applies to different triangles as well. The simplest form of triangle is a triangle that contains one right angle. And you typically would draw the triangle with the right angle in the bottom right hand corner, like this. And if we extend that triangle a little bit with these dotted lines, you'll see it forms a rectangle. And the rectangle has got a width of B and a height of H. And obviously, that's how tri rectangles are defined. The surface area of that rectangle is exactly B times H. No big um, revelation there. But, remember we're looking at a triangle, and as you can clearly see from this picture, the triangle cuts the rectangle exactly in half. And that is why the surface of that triangle is a half times B times H. But I can hear you protest. What if the triangle isn't as easy as this? What if it's one of these? A triangle where the, the base is wide and the other two angles come up like that, and there's no right angle. Well, let's again draw a rectangle about it. And the rectangle, again, will have the dimensions B times H. But let's drop a line, another dotted line, down from the apex, the top of the triangle, down to the base. And what have we got then? Two little rectangles. Now, whatever the, the widths of those rectangles are, the height of both of them is H. So, you know, the widths are A1 and A2, for example, and therefore the, the surface of one rectangle is A1 times H and the other rectangle is A2 times H. But you also know that those two widths add up to B, because that's, you can see that in the picture. So the total surface of those two rectangles is still B times H. And as you can see, each little rectangle is cut exactly in half by part of the triangle. And therefore, if you put those two parts of the triangle together, you get half the size of the rectangle, and again, you get the formula half times B times H. So then the only case that's left to explain, the one that's the hardest, is this one, where the kind of apex, the top of the triangle, overhangs so that it's not above the, the base of the triangle at all. It sticks out over the base somewhere in space. What do you do then? Well, let's again draw the rectangle that fits along the, 
around the whole triangle. Now you can straight away see that one side of the triangle cuts that rectangle exactly in half. So that side is half times h times the base plus the width of the overhang which I will call x. So that's a half times h times b plus x. Also you can see a smaller triangle which has the size again according to the very first example that we showed a half times x times h. The whole thing, the whole rectangle has a, has a surface of h times b plus x so all we need to do is take that h times b plus x and subtract the sizes, the areas of the two dotted triangles to get what's left over which is the original triangle and as you can see again that adds up to a half times b times h and there's your proof in an informal way that is why the surface area of a triangle is always a half times b times h and hopefully now that formula will be a bit less hard to memorize. Thank you.